What's up, guys? We're back with George and Chris. We're going to talk about something we talked about before, but just with Chris. With the Walt Disney World's reopening and probably a whole bunch of other stuff. But George over here, busy man, but he has lots of thoughts on this. So I'm, it's going to be the, the George Show. It's like Grand Circle Tour on Theme Park Wizard Show today. <laughs> so George, <laughs> Universal is obviously open now. <laughs> Looks great. And Disney World's opening in a month from now. What are your thoughts, Mr. East Coast? <laughs> well, I just have to say it's glad to be back. Um, I know I've been a little uh, MIA from the media world. And uh, hopefully, you know, with my schedule and everything, I can get back to doing what I love doing best. And that's definitely talking Disney. So, <laughs> But, yeah, uh, for me... I had watched a lot of um, uh, vloggers that went to the grand opening of Universal and also the pass holder preview. And what was very surprising to me was that the pass holder preview had bigger crowds than the actual grand opening. And because it was kind of, I was on the fence of thinking, okay, when Disney opens, and with all these new restrictions and rules and regulations, how is this going to work for annual pass holders? More so for Walt Disney World. I'm really not too concerned with Disneyland because with you guys, Disneyland is a locals park. You know, pretty much any California resident is pretty much an annual pass holder to Disneyland. And I know you guys get travelers from other states and what have you, but I mean, majority Disneyland is for California residents, but for Walt Disney World, it's the number one tourist destination in the world. You know, we get people from the, the, the state itself, from Florida, from other states, from out of country. So my concern was how are they going to do this new reservation system with annual pass holders? Because First of all, you have to have an annual pass or a ticket in order to even get through the registration for this new reservation system. Then once you do that, it'll give you a certain amount, certain dates that you can go to the park for which they said that's going to be very limited. You know, you may want to go for five days, but you may only have the option to get three out of those five days or what have you. So I'm thinking, how is this going to work with annual pass holders? Because, especially if you're a Florida resident, because they're just so used to going in and out. And that's what I'm looking forward to when I move next year is just having that option of going in and out, you know, what have you. But hopefully by then, there will be a better enough system by the time next year comes, especially for the 50th. Now you say something interesting. You said you were more concerned for Florida than for California, but I'm going to have to say the opposite. I think I'm more concerned for California versus Florida for the reason you mentioned. Because like you said, <laughs> all of us are annual passers, and I follow these Facebook groups, you know, the, you know, you follow them, you know, the Disney Facebook groups, and <laughs> some of these annual passers are a decent chunk of them, San Francisco or Arizona or Nevada. Right, and there's so many of them that I feel like if they, especially if they pay the top tier one, like I think Chris, you have the top tier one, and yeah, you can't go when you've already paid your $1,500 or whatever, and you're drive down from San Francisco to go to Disneyland. I feel like you'd be very upset. And because there's so many local people, I feel like all the right reservations will be snagged up, just like you know, when we saw Rise of Resistance in like seconds. and okay. So I okay. feel like that's why so I feel like me, I'm more concerned. So, there. Okay, so let me ask you guys this. Just speaking, annual pass holders in general, let, not to separate Disney World with Disneyland, let's just say mm -hmm. overall Disney annual pass holders. Do you, fear, do you feel it's a fair game to actually have an annual pass at this point right now with this new reservation system? Because you're going to want to get your money's worth. If you're putting the money up front, but now you're in the same bracket with regular just basic ticket holders. 
and they can get a reservation over you, is that worth it in the long run? No, I, I'm going to have to say no. It, it, it's either they're going to have to honor the annual pass. And, and if people paid for a pass and, and the promise on, on the contract was you get a full year. I mean, I understand that they did, couldn't do two or three months because it was closed. And then they'll, they'll, they'll extend it on the back end. That's fine. We totally understand that. But when they reopen annual pass holders that were promised unlimited access, I think should get unlimited access. I mean, what's the point of paying $1,500 for the signature plus pass, annual pass exactly. if, if mm -hmm. I have the same restrictions as the person who pays half as much for their flex pass? Mm -hmm. And that's okay. where- One person has a day ticket. <laughs> yeah. And I'm sorry. And this is what I think Disney's issue was with when they handle the expos, is you have these higher price tier tickets, and then you have these lower- price tier tickets and then you have everyone mixed up all jumbled in the same expo floor yeah. trying to get in line for these things <laughs> and then you have sorcerer level mixed with gold members you have gold members mixed with silver members you have silver members mixed with just general guests i mean that is it's like a cataclysmic type <laughs> of thing and i think that's what they're doing now with this reservation system and I understand they have to have it right now because they're going either uh, Disney didn't officially say it, but between 20 to 30% capacity when they open. And I know the only way to get strategic numbers for that percentage point is to follow how many people are going in on that day. But as you said, Chris, I really don't think then it's, it's fair to people that already paid the money up front yeah that that pass was for to be able to go in whenever you want to mm -hmm. and to be restricted with that then they would for me i would either think to either as you said honor the pass give a refund regardless even if you didn't take the refund but still be able to use your pass or maybe add some extra features to the pass that can you can get your money's worth out of yeah so they're over they're they're turning a something that and again i understand because they want to make the uh, every guest that walk through the turnstiles they feel safe they feel comfortable but they want them to come back but sometimes like when you just say you know what let's honor the founder of this company he just d did things without even thinking yeah <laughs> like okay th this is what we're doing we're moving forward. Let's go. Let's go for it. Yeah. So I think really if they had Walt's optimistic side to say, you know what, let's just see where this takes us. I think they're p putting too much pen to paper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think sometimes that could hurt you in the long run. Yeah. yeah like Universal, and I think, has done a much better job with this. They've opened up their parks really quick. I know it's a smaller operation and stuff, but – I mean, all things, all things considered, they opened up their parks pretty quick. I mean, they're doing the social distancing thing. They got the mask wearing and all that stuff. You know, and for the most part, Ethan, you're more familiar with Universal than I am. They, they haven't really changed their ticketing system all that much, right? It's pretty much the same as before. Yeah, they, they really have. That's pretty, from what I've seen, it's pretty much you know, the same. And it seems like, again, <laughs> uh, example in Japan, Japan cleared its, they never really had a lockdown, so to speak. They had kind of because a lockdown of major gatherings, but their barbershops that they're always open. They took off the lockdown on major gatherings and immediately Universal announced that City Walk is going to be open like the next day. <laughs> and then Universal Japan is now reopening on June 19th, but Tokyo Disneyland, except for their, their expiry shopping center, their downtown Disney thing, I think that would be open. June first, but they the theme parks are still kind of like nothing there. Where Universal is reopening it in like two weeks there, so it seems like Universal continues to. And even here, there's really nothing except for maybe the July 17th for Disneyland. But Universal wants to reopen uh, late June or uh, July 1st. So I feel like you know they're taking a great approach with reopening first. And yeah. also the people online they say that the, or they make it seem like you. But you have to go. Just because the place is open doesn't mean you have to go. You know, if you don't feel comfortable, don't go, you know. 
but they, I, I see these posts online like, oh my gosh, it's too early. It's oh my god, that's terrible. I'm like, okay, then just they can. You don't. You're not forcing to come back. You don't just because they have a pass or whatever. You don't, you don't have to. They're not dragging you. It's not like a magnet. Get yeah. over here, or else your your pass is invalid. You don't have to go. That's the beautiful little freedom of the choice here. <laughs> Well, and that's why I've been so confused about this whole thing with the COVID situation and everything. It's just, there's so much information out there. And it's like, you know, I mean, like, that's why I think Universal just handled it the right way. I mean, they're doing, they're, there's opening up their parks, you wear a mask, you social distance, end of story. Disney. And also the, like, sorry. Yeah, yeah, but I'd say also the, the I, like you said, Universal is smaller in, or, or in every aspect, but I think it really helped, you know, those the special pass holder days or whatever they did to, you know, to take the pressure off of opening day. So that way on opening day, they, like you said, George, didn't need a reservation system because they can just, there was an empty-ish because the pass holders went on third and the fourth and that way they got their fix and then the no reservation for the regular day because they can just walk right in. I personally feel that if they were going to start out with 20 to 30% capacity and they don't want to have as many people on property starting out, that they should have just allowed annual pass holders to start everything off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just closed on the, the ticket centers for right now. Don't release no basic tickets. Don't release nothing. Just let annual pass holders in. Right. That's perfect. And then for like Disneyland, because we have a huge annual pass holder population, you can even, you can even phase in the different pass holders. So you can do like the signature passes get the first month. It's only signature passes. The second month they'll add another tier, the third, you know, then they can start adding as they go and do it that way. That's a great idea, George. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think, and as, as you say, Chris, I think it's just, they're, they're overthinking it. And it's like, I'm sitting here listening to them and it's like, it's so simple. <laughs> yeah, it's like, come I don't on. understand. But it's it's also now to the notion of with Disney World's hotels because they're opening DVC on June twenty second. Now, when they first released that Disney World was reopening with Magic Kingdom and Animal Kingdom on July eleventh, they also said that the hotels were going to open with that but then disney had opted out and now the hotels are not so as of right now it is only the parks that are going to be opening uh magic kingdom and animal kingdom on july 11th and then hollywood studios and epcot on the 15th for which my own opinion on that is if it was up to me i would have just kept epcot closed for the time being because mm -hmm. now that construction is back up and running i would have just kept that park closed because it's basically the whole entire front of the park is completely blocked off anyway. And I would have just let construction continue until most of it was done and then open up Epcot last. Yeah, no, that, that makes the, sense. For the hotels, because I, I know, I don't know if it was a mistake for the July 11th, or they, they, whatever it was, but I think, because um, you know they're figuring out the NBA situation, I feel like part of the reason they took away the hotel thing was they're trying to figure out, you know, what part, what hotel to use for the NBA players on July 31st, so that kind of makes sense. Also, I feel like, you know, there may not be a lot of travel, so I feel like they should only open, like, maybe some hotels, not all of them, <clears throat> but some, to see how the occupancy is, and then continue on for the rest of the resort. Now, let me ask you guys this, because I'm kind of like a back and forth type of thing with the the mask protocol. And no. <laughs> Controversial and, opinion incoming. And, and, here we go. <laughs> and, and, and here's why. Now they say you have to have your mask on covering your mouth and nose at all time, except when you're eating. And I believe I read an article. I don't know if this proclaimed with Disney, but also when you're swimming, like you're fine yeah. with it. So, also, there's little cool down zones, I guess. In the oh, hospital. yeah, right. Yes. And certain sections you can take it off. But so when it comes to that notion, say you're at the hotel and you're going to the pool. <laughs> you're in the pool. You don't have your mask on. 
But say you want to get out and grab your drink or what have you, grab your towel, whatever. You step foot out of the pool, put your mask back on, walk over to your drink, <laughs> take your mask off to drink, put it back on, walk back <laughs> over to the pool, and then retake it back. Like, what is, like, the protocols of where you can have your mask on and then where you can have your mask off, minus, like, the section-wise, but I mean, is mm -hmm. it the pool area in general you can have your mask off or I hope so. only when you're in the water <laughs> i hope it would be the pool area because i mean even on the seats you everyone has their own seat the seats are pretty big so i feel like they're six feet apart anyway i feel like you wouldn't have to, i hope you wouldn't have to do that that sounds very complicated and painful I mean, yeah. even in my barber shop yesterday um my hair is going over my ear so she said, oh, yeah, it's okay. Just take off your mask. I should be cutting my hair. Like, I feel like it won't be, like, hopefully it's not, like, super strictly enforced. And especially with me, I love to sunbathe. I love getting this Italian tan <laughs> on. So when I'm laying out, of course, like, I want my whole body to get tan. And can you imagine if I had a mask on while laying out? <laughs> and then I got all tan and then got this big white spot, like, right in the middle of my face. It, it's it's pretty wild you guys it's pretty wild you know it's just i don't know it's so confusing with the mask wearing and all that like what george was touching upon with when to take it on and off on and off i you know it's it's crazy and and by the time walt disney world opens which isn't even until mid-july i mean are we still going to be i don't know i'm not a doctor but i mean are we still going to even how necessary are these masks even going to be at that point i feel like it's already kind of winding down you know isn't oh, it? it is trust me i've actually seen more people without the masks well i mean let me take that back i mean i still I, there's a lot of people that wear masks but i'm starting to see more people get relaxed with it and that's actually a good point they're automatically saying okay, you, you're, you have to wear a mask. It's a requirement, but they're already speaking as if they know what it is actually going to be like on July 11th. I mean, right. as fast as this came, it could be gone. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it already seems like COVID, since the whole protesting started, COVID seems almost like a total afterthought already. And yeah. imagine what it's going to be like in mid-July. Mm -hmm. I mean, it seems like it's going to be totally irrelevant i mean it's gonna feel like it's you know i mean i mean now don't get me wrong as far as the calm protesting as i said i'm i'm glad that they did it was for a worthy good cause oh absolutely maybe, i agree but maybe <laughs> that the good calming protesting had to happen to show people to say hey you don't have to fear going out anymore you're fine <laughs> Definitely, yeah, it, it was those definitely definitely don't care. <laughs> yeah, it, it it definitely was a um. Well, yeah, the cause absolutely. I 100% yeah. agree with you. I support it 100%. But also <laughs> in regards to the silver lining, it it like um, yeah, it kind of loosened this like yeah. It kind of gave everyone a breath of fresh air. Okay, okay, we're out now and about now, and we're not like you know totally living in a in like we're not all like bubble boy <laughs> you know it's like you know some normalcy has returned we can interact with each other yeah because i really think a big part of this now just speaking now i'm i'm not saying as i said i feel so bad for the people who have died loved people who lost their loved ones people who are still trying to recover people in the hospital i feel for them completely but just speaking of right now, I think now it's more of the fear that yeah. that really has people going up saying, what are my limitations of how much that I won't be able to catch this thing? It's like, should I do this? Can I do this? Can I do that? And I think it's more so now the fear than anything. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. yeah, totally. In that case, you know, like, like I said, if you're, if you're fearful that's fine well then but you just you know you don't have to go <laughs> shouldn't be closed for me <laughs> yeah, i agree with you Ethan. yeah you know just open it up to the people that aren't scared right like, like you know because i know there's so many people even my mom my mom is a complete germ -phobe, complete even before that she's not washing your hands but she's after being this and she doesn't she's kind of an introvert too she doesn't go outside but even for her 
So after two months later, she's like, you know, Ethan, I can't wait to get out of here. I can't wait to get out of here. I gotta take the dogs on the beach. I'm gonna leave. <laughs> after, yeah. So I mean, even she wants to go. So you know, that's why you know, like, for example, like restaurants, the restaurant near me just opened up for the dining service. You don't have to go, but people are like trickling in. The hair cutting place, no one, I mean, people were in with their masks. They didn't seem to care. I feel like, you know, like Chris said, if everything's just open, you know, maybe not a concert, but like if everything normal is open, you can go if you want, you can go if you don't. But the you more people that are fearful, it's good for me because that means a shorter line. <laughs> you know what they should do? They should make masks like with a Velcro, and then you could just pop it open, take a bite out of whatever you're doing, and then just seal it back up. <laughs> that would be yeah. great. The, some, actually there were some really cool masks I've seen like for like breathing or doing different things like I'm like wow that's pretty cool it's pretty and that could be a George we can make that a, like our next invention yep. Velcro eating a mask we'll make it a patent <laughs> <laughs> like wow but yeah so like every other theme park it seems like even around the world has a reopening date Except for Disneyland, you know how sad that is. I know, I know. Yeah, I, I thought for I thought for sure, even if they were going to open on different dates, I thought Disney was going to announce the date itself when they announced Walt Disney World. Like as I said, even if it was a different date, okay, well Disney World's opening up this time and date, and Disneyland's going to open. I thought for sure that was going to happen, and. I'm assuming it should be coming close because you guys are going to be hitting into phase three. What is it next week? Next week, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah but I, yeah, I hope so. Because, <laughs> like I mentioned, a different live stream video. We've been in phase two for how many weeks, Chris? Like at least three, four. Yeah, months? it's been like a month. And, and Orange County got actually approval before the official state got to phase two, and downtown Disney still hasn't even been open, even though it's legally been allowed to for like a month. I'm like, wow, come on. I now, can't even do walk think, down there. Now, do you, think, <laughs> do you think Disney is actually using Walt Disney World sort of as the guinea pig to see how it turns out on July 11th and then work on Disneyland? Um, maybe, yeah, maybe, because you know the 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 law the the lockdown stuff in Florida is more lax, so maybe they figure, okay, we'll open it up in Florida. They have the looser lockdown rules, and then uh, we'll kind of implement what works over in Anaheim when that time comes. Because California is a lot more strict. Governor Newsom has been pretty aggressive with with the lockdowns, much more so than the governor of Florida. So maybe Disney's sort of like using that you know as as a as a testing ground like you said but how sweet would that be for you guys to have your grand reopening on july 17th oh that's, dude come on, that's, oh that'd be great they should do that like, they should do oh, that <laughs> and actually believe it or not they um i don't know have you guys ever heard of uh the food chain um it's on the east coast it's called eaton park no no. no. Okay. Yeah. It's it's uh, it's on East Coast. It's sort of like um Big Boy type of thing. Oh, I so one of them. they just reopened yesterday, and yesterday was their grand re grand opening day seventy one years ago. Wow. So oh, when I heard really? that, so when I heard that, I thought, oh yeah, Disneyland has to do. That. <laughs> they, yeah, that would be so great. That would be nice. the biggest party ever. Can you imagine? Yeah, that would be so cool. But imagine, you said, like, Florida's a guinea pig. I think, well, they're all different operations, but I feel like, you know, I feel like Shanghai would be, like, enough of a guinea pig to yeah. like, kind of understand what, you know, because they've been increasing, I think they've been adding at least 5,000 more people in, like, the cap is rising each week and seems to be working out, I've heard no problem. I feel like, you know, it's going well there. I feel like that's a good guinea pig type of thing because that's a one park versus four, like Disney World. I feel like it's kind of closer to the Disneyland Resort. And I think that's yeah. where Disney World's notion is where they're trying to figure out the system of how everything would work because with Walt Disney World, four theme parks, 
two water parks, 30 plus hotels or 20, 20 plus hotels. It's, uh, it's such on a much higher scale that they would have to have rules and regulations for each section. Yeah. Like rules and regulations for the parks, for the hotels, for the restaurants. And it's like, uh, I didn't know that I needed a study guide to go on vacation. <laughs> no. I know. I just, I just wish they would just take the universal approach and just open it up, have everyone wear a mask. Yeah. Make I, it I easy. honestly would have. Because Universal, they opened up all their hotels, right? I think yeah. so. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, because I saw someone, some YouTuber, I think a two or three, one of them. Um, but speaking of that action, George, what do you think of the fast pass plus and dining cancellations do you think it's a good time for a fast pass overhaul absolutely believe it or not i've heard people complain to say why would you take off fast pass plus and i'm thinking <laughs> yes fine that's fine with me because i'm like this could be disney's opportunity bring max pass over to walt disney world i mean for me i i think if they were to have the max pass I don't really think they would have had too much of an issue to cancel everyone's fast passes because for me, fast pass plus at times could just be a little bit of a headache <laughs> because you're only allotted three each day. That's it. And then after your third one, you can then choose one on that day every hour. Wow. But by the time that happens, there's no fast passes left. So there's yeah, no I was gonna say the, the real problem for me I would be like, gosh, how do I, would I know which ride I want to make a fast pass for two months in advance or something? Like, I don't know. Like, what are the wait times going to be? I don't know. So <laughs> like, the max pass is like, and as you know, far and then, as, and then as far as with dining, I I think that was still a good approach to do as well because for how many people that may have dining reservations, if you're not one of the ones that is part of the twenty to thirty percent that you know your dining reservation is going to be wasted so it's pretty much disney having to hit the reset button and start all over however i felt that there was some gray areas with dining because say you were to make a reservation to a restaurant in the park for an example say uh, say you're lucky enough and you get a reservation for be our guest at the magic kingdom but you don't have or you have a ticket, but you don't have access to get into the park because you, you didn't get into the reservation system in time. Your, re your dining reservation is no good. You would then have to reschedule your dining because they're, as far as what I've known, that they're not letting no one in the park unless you have that reservation with your ticket. Wow. Wow. Oh, yeah, that's a weird. That's so complex. Yeah. It, I think they're really making it more harder on themselves. It's like common core math. <laughs> it's, like, it's like rather than do just the basic math, <laughs> you're doing 10 different steps to get to the same answer. Yeah, yeah, it's it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. I think they're I think they're really worried, and and I guess rightfully so. I mean, they don't want to be they don't want to be responsible for another outbreak, which I exactly. understand. Yes, but at this point, they kind of have they kind of have what do they call that? Plausible deniability. Yes. Because any yeah. outbreak that happens now, you can be like, oh well, Universal was open first. It might have been them. Mm -hmm. You know, they can kind of all these other parks have been opening, mm -hmm. so it's not like they they're like the first one out the gate. Mm -hmm. They can kind of, I don't know. It just feels like they can kind of hide behind, like, well, every other park is open, so. And they have those big signs that says "Enter at your own risk," basically. Yeah. So. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. that's actually Disney saving their own skin because, mm -hmm. I mean, if I was a big business like that, I would say, you know, you're entering our property at your own risk. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, so you know that was smart of them on that point. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah legally, especially that if there's. Yeah, especially with the people that show no symptoms that could walk in there and then transfer. You don't know, but you're entering at your own risk. So open it up. But what do you think this is going to do for the – what 
things do you think will be cut for the 50th uh, anniversary? If as any. far as with the anniversary goes, that, that was a big question of mine because I'm thinking we're, we're one year off to Dis- one of Disney's biggest celebrations ever in milestone and a milestone and this had to happen so it's like as far as obviously cinderella castle is still going to get the uh the makeover you, you know, like the, that new paint job by the way it kind of actually reminded me a little bit of the color of uh the shanghai yeah uh, uh mm-hmm. castle Definitely. so I, I actually can't wait to see what it looks like and i'd be like okay that looks nice well at least this is temporary (laughs) (laughs) well and and, you know you also have to keep in mind that like and they did this with our castle too in anaheim you have to keep in mind that when when they paint these they paint them brighter than that brighter than they really actually want them to be because they factor in the fading process Mm -hmm. because especially in florida you guys get a lot of heat and a lot of weather you guys get a lot of rain and wind and all that mm-hmm. good stuff so mm-hmm. that that thing it's bright now but in a in a in six months to a year it ain't going to be that bright yeah so i think as far as like the decorations and everything goes that's on point um it was said that construction has started back up um at well yeah I saw that. so um obviously i know ratatouille will be up and ready um guardians even though everything is up i'm kind of worried about guardians because they said that the the filming for the attraction itself was supposed to intertwine with guardians 3 and being that all filming had stopped they have nothing to put for the the show part of it but then that also makes me think too then what's the point of even having a show because the the queue is going to have to be reduced because the more complex that you have of a queue, the more people you have to hold at one time. Mm -hmm. Because I was told even with the haunted mansion, they're not going to have the, um, where you're standing in the the center of the room where the the stretching room and everything, they're they're just going to have the doors open and you just walk in and you just bypass that. Wow. Oh wow! So they're not going to have the stretching room uh, at all for that. Like, the, and, uh, as far as I know, of what I've heard, the room will still be there, but they're not going to stop for that little spiel. That's interesting. But, and in, in the Magic Kingdom, is it like an actual? Is it just a flat thing? Because ours is like an elevator. So, like, how does that work? Yeah, ours is just the room. It's just the. Oh. The, so like Disneyland, if they skip it, what do you walk down? Some well, I don't know about Disneyland. As far as the, I just know that that's what they're going to do with Disney World. Oh, for sure. Uh, yeah. So because uh, I think Disney or uh, that might be like at least for the Hunter one of the easier parts because I think you know like maybe like put some pieces of tape like an X on the ground and then have so, like, put, people stand because there. With the Haunted Mansion in Florida, at least with you your guys Haunted Mansion, you have a line that kind of. Mm-hmm goes a run where with ours it's pretty much everyone just stand in front of the doors and they say move up for all available space just bypass people it's like okay that's not going to happen now <laughs> <laughs> yeah ethan ethan that's true i mean like our haunted mansion our stretching room was sort of actually um come about out of necessity because they had to get underground and beyond the berm yeah. So it would be interesting to see when it opens again with all the social distancing, how that whole thing works. You now, know? unless what they'll do is they'll keep the stretching room, but maybe let so many people go in at a time. Yeah, yeah probably. And yeah, maybe I guess they just put like markings on the ground. Maybe just because I really, I truly think in the future anyway, and I think COVID just kind of pushed everything up sooner. I think after Rise of the Resistance, I think a lot of the e-ticket hot attractions that people really go for they were going to make um queuing for it anyway the way like they did for rise oh the virtual queue yeah 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 they're going to definitely utilize that i think too i think you're right george and uh yeah and even a whole a whole bunch of like uh six flags and all doing the virtual queue thing 
Very interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to go visit? July 11th yeah, or July for, 4th? Well, here, here's the funny thing. I was thinking to see that if I could get, because um, they're going to do an annual pass preview mm -hmm. um, for the pre re grand opening of it mm -hmm. and i was going to see it depending on what the day is that maybe because i still have my annual pass it doesn't expire till august 20th that maybe that i can uh sneak down there and maybe see how this reservation system works yes film a video on it yes yes yes, yes. we we miss disney family man We're yeah disney i definitely <laughs> So yeah, so Disney I'm gonna, family man has been dark. <laughs> yes, it's it's been dark with the with the rest of the world. It's, it has to reopen with everything else. <laughs> <laughs> it's been the black screen. It's been supporting Black Lives Matter for longer than the, the protest. <laughs> you, you know what? Speaking of that, I got man. Twitter Twitter suspended me for using the black Black Lives Matter hashtag. <laughs> what? Suspended oh, me wow. for that's, three. That's, for, that's like for, that's like. For that's three like days. Re that's like reverse racism. <laughs> it, it, for three days. I, okay, because I, 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 I tweeted the hashtag out, right, in support mm. for the movement. And I, it was like right before I went to bed, right? Mm -hmm. The next morning I had a letter, I mean, a notification from Twitter <laughs> that they're restricting my account because that hashtag violated some spam policy. I don't know. And then so oh, I was wow. still able to log in. Wow. Yeah, I was still able to log in, but it was like, <laughs> I couldn't like tweets. I couldn't retweet. I couldn't. It was like I was super limited for three full days. It, made it was. Mad. It's pretty much probably the people looking on Twitter. It's like, okay, he's good. She's good. He's good. Wait a minute. This guy's white. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably one of a probably one of the Orange Grove's trolls that I like to hate on his post. The probably report. Probably. Like, Why are they using this? <laughs> probably. <laughs> well, George, it was nice to have you on, and Chris too on your. Much awaited thoughts on the Disney World reopening. I can't wait to see your video. Hopefully, you sneak it down. There. Yeah, hopefully, if I can get down there, I will definitely be uh, doing a, a video on location. So, so we'll everyone, go subscribe to his channel. There'll be nothing for a while, but subscribe so it builds up his <laughs> number. <laughs> and subscribe to Orange Go 55 too. And as always, have a fantastic day. <laughs>